I'm Anil Kumar and I'm experimenting with few new concepts and I hope some of my students will appreciate it. In this video you will see a card popping up on the right hand corner and you can click at that and answer the question. The question written there is can we have two horizontal asymptotes for a function? Very interesting. Let's explore this radical function and see what kind of results we get here. Question is, find the horizontal asymptotes for function f of x equals to x divided by square root of x square minus 1. Now, when we want to find horizontal asymptote, we are basically finding limit of the function as x approaches positive infinity or we are finding limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity, right? So that is what we are basically trying to find. If this limit exists, then the horizontal asymptote exists, otherwise not, right? This is first thing. Second thing is, if some of you have seen my videos, you understand what is square root of x square? Square root of x square is not x. Square root of x square is absolute x. So what you need to remember is that square root of x square is actually equals to absolute value of x, right? Square root is always positive, correct? So it is not x, it is absolute value of x. That will help you to find solution of this particular problem. Now let's look into it. Let me first simplify the expression itself. It is x over square root of x square minus 1. I could write this as x over and if I take x square common I get 1 minus 1 over x square, right? Now here we have square root of x square, you understand, which is absolute x. So we could write this as x over absolute x. Do you get the idea? And uh, 1 over, which is x times 1. Let's write like that. Uh, square root of 1 minus 1 over x square. You get the idea. So we could rewrite this function as x over square root of 1 minus x square times absolute x. Correct? So that is a function which is same as the function given to us. So we can write this limit. Let's now calculate the limit for positive infinity and negative infinity, right? So we have limit of the function as x approaches positive infinity. The function for us is x over absolute x square root of 1 minus 1 over x square. Correct? Now, if x is a very large positive number, then 1 over x square will be 0. So square root of 1 minus 0 will be 1. So what you get here is limit of the function as x approaches infinity for x over absolute value of x. Perfect. Now if x is positive infinity, absolute x is always positive, right? So, what do we have? We have positive 1 as our answer, correct? If you sketch x over absolute x function, let me sketch it here and show you. It's a very important video. Let us understand each and every aspect. Then this function could be drawn like this, right? So, that is uh, x over absolute x function, right? That is how you could sketch it. So you can see, as x approaches positive infinity, the function approaches positive 1. When x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches minus 1. So that is the next half. That is to say, limit as x approaches minus infinity for x over absolute x square root of 1 minus 1 over x square, which you know, 1 over x square is 0. So we are left with limit x approaches minus infinity for x over absolute x and that is minus 1. Do you see that? 
Now what you see here is when x approaches positive infinity, the value of the function approaches 1. Now that means what? That means what? That means that the horizontal asymptote is y equals to 1. And here we have as x approaches minus infinity, then the limit of the function approaches minus 1. So that means that the horizontal asymptote is y equals to minus 1. You get the idea, right? So therefore, we have our answer. And that is, we have two horizontal asymptotes here, right? We have two horizontal asymptotes. That is very important conclusion. One of them is y equals to plus 1 and the other one is y equals to minus 1, right? You get the idea? So in this particular expression, denominator is always positive. So we can also find behavior near the asymptotes, right? So, so basically what we have here is we have one asymptote here, which is plus 1, the other one here, which is minus 1. So we have two asymptotes. First one, we could write this as y equals to 1. This we could write y equals to minus 1. Now, for some of you, you can also find the behavior near the asymptote or the end behavior. So, you know, the denominator is always positive. If x is positive, it is going to be plus, right? So it is going to be positive. Perfect. Now, if the denominator, you know, is always positive, if x is negative, then we expect a negative value, correct? So that gives you an idea that we are actually approaching plus 1 and minus 1, right? The second part of this function is whether you are approaching from above or below. So if I write 100, for example, here in this case, the denominator will be, as you can see, 1 minus something, right? 1 minus something means less than 1, right? So if it is less than 1, we are dividing by a value which is less than 1, so we get more than 1 as a result, correct? So you are approaching from the positive side, positive side. And in this particular case, when x is negative infinity, in that case also, what we get here is, so what you can do is you can substitute negative 100. So this value, you know, is 1, I mean minus 1 if you are substituting minus, uh, let us say you are substituting large minus 100 as a value. But the fraction here, 1 over square root 1 minus something, 1 minus, however small it may be, square root is going to be less than 1, so the value will be negative more than 1, right? So negative more than 1. So you are approaching from the negative side, right? So that is how you can find how the function is approaching in the as the function approaches negative and positive infinity. So the question for you is find n behavior. Find n behavior and be and check if function approaches from above or below the horizontal asymptote. Right? So I would like you to check this. Use your calculator, plug in a value which is, uh, let's say plus 100 for this point minus 100 for, for this point and see for yourself what do you get. I hope that helps you to understand the concept. Thank you and all the best.